All right, watch up. Welcome back to the Always Garage. Today I'm just going to do something that I think has been asked three or four times. It's to repack a baffle on a motorcycle silencer. Now that's referring to the silencers that are straight through. They have a straight through central tube, which is perforated with holes down it and wadding around the outside. And that's effectively a race can. And now they sound fantastic, but over time, the wadding inside them, that soft fiberglass wadding inside, it just gets fragmented and blown away and they need repacking. You need to strip them out, take the old rubbish out of the way and repack them with fresh stuff and it silences them, it stops their echoing. Now the opportunity to do this has come up. We were asked a few times because some guys in the States have got some D and D race exhausts on their bikes, on their Triumph uh, Street Triples, and they want to repack them because the repacking service offered by D and D was lots of money, lots of dollars, and they didn't want to be paying that. You really don't need to. It's ever so simple. Now, not all exhausts are the same. The ones on the Scrambler are megaphones. Just come on in. Yeah? Um, now, these megaphones, as you can see, if you look inside, if you can see inside there, they have a baffle tube which runs down inside to the taper at the front. Can't really see. No, it's a bit dark. No mind. Okay, we'll see in a minute. Um, and these cones on the back are removable, so you can take them off, take the tube out, and then you can repack whatever's in there. Now these particular ones, these were a gift from my great friend Johnny Cactus Zero. He sent me these uh, as a gift uh, in between things, and we put them on the bike, and I didn't have any wadding in them. I just put the baffle tube in with none. But it's exactly the same as if they've got some wadding that's blown up. Uh, this is what happens. It, it degrades, it gets rubbish, it turns into just dust, and it blows away, and eventually it needs redoing. So whether there's some in there today or not, doesn't matter, I'm going to show you how to rip it out and repack it, put it all back together and it doesn't sound. But before we do that, I'm going to do a before and after. I'm just going to run the bike up to give it a sound, what it's like now. Because I'm finding, the reason I'm doing this today is it's echoey. This thing echoes like hell. It's great, it's fantastic setting car alarms off with it, but it is a little intrusive. And the police around here where we live, they're fantastic. They really are great. They don't mind about that sort of thing. As long as you keep it down, you're not too leery. But there will come a time, you know, it's only so far you can push them. So we're going to repack these baffles, make them a little bit quieter, a little bit more solid. So this is what they sound like, first of all, empty. This is hollow, listen to that empty hollow sound that they make, where the sound waves echo inside that pipe because there's nothing to stop that sound expanding into the outside of the cone. All right? So this is what it sounds like first, then we're going to pull them apart and repack them. First one, we're going to take this cone off. Now, it's got three little retaining screws in it, which just hold it in place. But obviously, this exhaust has been on the road for about a thousand miles, and that means that it does have uh, a bit of rust around that seal, and that is not going to come off easily. So, simple method. Come on, this side. What I'm going to do is just use a bit of common sense. You can't really pull because that's a sharp metal edge inside there. So what I'm going to do is going to put that on there just to get something inside there and hit it off. And there's no dents on it because obviously if that's on there and you're going to chisel in this gap to try and knock it off, it's just going to damage it, aren't you? That's the best way to get that off right now. The next one, come on down there, I'll show you. This is the baffle itself inside there. Now that really is jammed in. This rust has developed through the condensation, has held it in place, and obviously it's tight wedged in at the front, so it's gas tight. I need to get that out. And the easiest method, here. Now everybody asks me now and again, can we have a video uh, on some of the Delboy tools that you make for yourself? I think the best one was recently on the sink waste pipe that I used to drive, baffle, uh, drive seals into forks. Um, you do that for 50p. This is another little tool. Now I made this years ago. It's quite simply a piece of bar, a piece of wire, and a little hooky on the end. And the reason I use this, this is normally for centre stand springs. If you take the centre stand spring or the side stand spring off your bike, you know what it's like. If you've ever done it, you know it's a pretty terrifying experience because you've got a heavyweight metal spring. You're trying to normally lever it off with a screwdriver or lever it on 
and you just know it's going to come off and knock your bleeding teeth out. It's a nasty, horrible, scary thing, wrapping towels around it, it's wincing, trying to, because it, it, once it slips off, if that screwdriver slips, it goes. So I made that little hook, and all that does is hooks in the spring, and you hook it on place. And it's great for, great for other things as well. And this is one of them. All I'm going to do is hook that little hook inside one of the holes in the baffle. Let's get it in there. Just find one. It will oh, it's up being at the dentist. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And then just once that's hooked in place. Right. And there we are. <laughs> it honestly that made is. Me jump. <laughs> well, you kind of knew it was going to happen. <laughs> that wasn't coming out. Right. Let's get that cone out of the way. We scratch it. Now, if this was a repack, a proper repack job, you'd have all kinds of tatters of old wadding around that. Just clean it all off, rip it all off, clean it away, and get your central tube back to that. So here's one I did earlier. That's back to there, they don't need any more. And today, we have some baffle wadding. Now, it would seem that the people who lived here before us did baffle wadding for a living because they seem to have left about 400 tons of it in the loft which is really great. Now this is obviously loft insulation. Those of you are already in the comments box already saying oh you can't use loft insulation. Well it's the same thing folks. Honestly it's the same thing. It's fiberglass wadding designed to insulate against heat. It's completely fireproof. If you don't believe get a blow lamp, hold it on it. It doesn't burn and it is excellent for this purpose. It is finite. Even the baffle wadding that the baffles come with is finite and it will break up and it will dissipate and you'll need to repack it. So this stuff is absolutely fine. Before anybody flames me and says you can't use loft insulation, watch and learn. You can. I've been doing it for many, many years. Many houses we've lived in have had their lofts bereft of some wadding and it works an absolute treat. Also, if you go on YouTube or sorry, if you go on eBay and you look up baffle wadding, they sell these little sheets of the stuff for about £10 and that's just an absolute rip off. You don't need to spend it. This stuff is exactly the same. Right, so I'll show you how to cut it out. All we want to do, this is a little bit that was left, that's all. So many of those are already writing messages saying you should be wearing masks and gloves and a full suit. And get your high vis on. Get your high vis <laughs> <laughs> And a full high vis. Uh, yes, I know, but I'm making a video and uh, you wouldn't be able to hear me if I was inside a mask and I'm just being very careful. All right, I'm just going to cut that. Cut a piece to size and we'll deal with the other side of it later. Right, there we go. You normally cut it with a knife. That's it, right. Out of the way. Now just handling it as carefully as I can because it does it does particleize. Particleize? Particleage. 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 It does come off in bits and you don't want it all over you uh, and in your lungs. So what I'm going to do when I get to this point is actually this is a taper. As you can see it's that fat one end but it tapers right down to a point this end. So we need less wadding at this end than we do at the front on this particular bike. If you've got a bike that's got a parallel can, you put it in absolutely parallel, all the way down. So what I'm doing with this is at this end of it, like Vidal Sassoon, <laughs> I'm just giving it a little short back and sides and thinning out the thickness at this end, just to make it a little bit easier to roll into place. You don't need all of it. And I only need probably one and a half wraps. Like that. I'll take a little bit more of that thickness at the one end. So once you've prepped it all, now we've got time to wrap it in place. And with this cut end, this side, so we pop that on. And just roll it in. Honestly, folks, it is as simple as that. Just roll it into place. Now, as tight as you can. Absolutely tight as you can, because if you don't, it will just blow away. As soon as you run the bike, you'll have none of it left. Just crush it in, take the air out of it, get it all on there. Now, at this end, we've got a kind of club cut end, which is no good. Hey, hairdressing tip, <laughs> there was garage. <laughs> So, I'm just going to chamfer that, that end. Watch out, Vidal. That's it, yeah. That's it. 
Maybe I should have worn a cravat for this video. Right, so there we are. Just going to thin out that end and kind of chamfer it in so that it kind of blends in seamlessly. You don't have a big wedge like that. A little bit more off there. Cookery program, isn't it? There we go. Right, get rid of that. Anyway. Now to hold it in place, obviously you need to pack this quite tight and for the purpose thereof, you know me, I don't use wire for things unless I've got some hanging about and this is garden twine, the stuff you, it's kind of plastic covered with metal inside that you take your beans to your bean poles with, so this is perfect. And to start off at the bottom end, just twist that in and then start by going with the flow of what you've done and just wrap it in place. Now it doesn't matter if this stuff is, is plastic and it maybe melts or whatever, it's not important, it won't hurt it because this stuff's quite heat insulative and it will prevent it getting, let's take a bit of that out actually, purely because I've done the other one and I know how little you need. You can experiment with yours, you may want to put more in or less, depends how much you can get in, but if you can, the general rule is, pack it as tight as you can. So that as time goes on, it's got half a chance of staying in the exhaust. Because if it's, if it's lightly packed and there isn't much body to it or strength, it will just blow away in no time. A couple of weeks later, you'll have it blowing again. Right down to the bottom. Now this stuff may well melt away but once it's melted away the steel won't and the what's remaining the steel will hold it in the baffle. I've, I've, I've opened baffles up in the past and I've seen sellotape holding them in so honestly don't be too anal about it. Now once you've got it done that's your baffle packed just again give it a short back and side. Remember this has got to go into a cone shaped tube so you can just trim all that off almost shaping it. I need that extra bit. So that it fits in. Right, that's a little bit less than it looked just now. But that's a couple of test bits and it's fine. They just crush it back in because it needs to be as tight as possible. I left a little bit at the end open just because that's quite heavily tapered at the back. Now let's pop it in. A line up. On this particular baffle it's got to line up these little dimples with the screw holes because they allow the screws to fit. There we are. And my favourite way of fitting them on this side. Right, you can feel it hit home nice and firm. And it needs to be a bit of a tap-in fit. If it's just a, a, a push-in fit and it's too loose then you know it's not enough of it in there. As I've said a couple of times already, if you make sure it's nice and tightly packed when it's in there it will last a lot longer. Now I'm just going to reassemble this now, stick the cone back on the back. Before I do that on this particular bike, that's what happens with condensation. You get this rust around the ring there. So once I've cleaned up some of this, I'm just going to file that rust off so it fits back in nice and tight. May pop a little bit of silicon around that this time, get a nice seal. Ready? Right, a bit of silicon on there, and I'm putting the silicon on as much as a rust preventative as anything else because you can see that this stuff is rather excellent. You can just spread it around and wipe off the excess in a minute. So that water, obviously, that condensation gets in that joint and rusts it solid. Now the silicon's obviously going to stick it in place as well, but it will stick it meaningfully uh, with less grief than the rust. So when I need to get this back out to repack it again, it'll come straight out without any grief, just in case of breaking the silicon seal. Okay, rubber mallet. Where's the rubber mallet pen? Hitting stick. Now on this one, again, this is really, I'm hoping this is going to be more of a generic video. So. 
whatever is your method of connection. You may have uh, a standard end cap with a ring and rivets, whatever yours might be. But in this instance, ours is this case. Here we go. And then just tap that in. That's it. And then we'll pop the screws in. These little, just little ditty self tappers. Sometimes it's nice when things are easily put together. <laughs> yeah, and here's Ooh. how to repaint your exhaust. <laughs> yeah, you see, I did miss it though, didn't I? There we are. Right, so it sounds like. you can see there very clearly that it's taken the echo out of the pipe which is what I wanted to do but that is no quieter that is just as loud as it was I don't know what the decibels are and long since given up and all that rubbish the principle is it's a nice sounding exhaust now it doesn't have that hollow echoiness that I think makes the bike sound a bit cheap so there we go that was how to repack a baffle it's ever so simple your baffle might be the parallel kind or whatever it is but that's the simple principle get that central tube out get it repacked in some loft insulation which is just as good as anything else you can buy the proper wadding if you want to be a little bit more special and do it that way entirely up to you you do what works for you this has worked for me for all oh, about 25 years and it's never let me down that stuff will still be in there going strong in about two or three years time i just whip it out another 10 minute job repack it again okay there you go hope that helped you out ride safe take it easy and we'll see you next time